Minasankonnichiwa, welcome to the best Japanese lesson in the galaxy. I am your Sensei Joe. So, you wanna be a mangaka? Awesome. What I'm gonna do today is, well, since I'm not a mangaka and I am not familiar with the industry at all, actually, all I can do is talk from common sense and lay out the obvious. So, don't take my word for it. Whatever I'm gonna say here, don't take my word for it. This is not supposed to be the real tutorial of how to become a mangaka in Japan. This is just me from living in Japan uh, for a long time and from what I heard from people or read on the internet, whatever, to just draw some kind of a conclusion based on my common sense and this should be in no way be used as like a textbook. Um, like a manual to how to become a mangaka. So if you guys can understand that, we'll move on. So whatever I'm gonna say is just based on my common sense. And yes. First of all, I feel like it is very, very important to be able to speak and read and write Japanese if you want to become a mangaka in Japan. I don't know if you want to become a mangaka overseas. Then that's a different story. Then that's fine. If you want to uh, draw manga, in English or whichever language like a lot of people do these days, that's fine. That's a different story. But since a lot of people come up and ask me how to become a mangaka in Japan, then it only makes sense to try to master Japanese. Now, when I say master, I'm not talking about university level or business level Japanese. I'm talking about the manga level Japanese. Now, it's not impossible. Like the level of difficulty of uh, Japanese that they use in manga world is not impossible. It's it's on actually on the easier side. So, yeah, like if you're not gonna bother trying to learn Japanese uh, to the point where you can understand everything that's written in, uh, for example, like those weekly manga anthology like Shonen Jump and stuff. If you can't understand, if you can't read or speak what's uh, being written in those mangas, then why bother becoming a mangaka in Japan? That is my question. Now, I don't know if your skills are just crazy awesome, like if you can draw like a mofo, or you can come up with stories just crazy and awesome enough, maybe they'll get someone to translate it for you. It's a possibility, it's always a possibility, but I mean, then again, like, I, I would totally uh, try to master Japanese. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't want to, like, it, it, there should be no excuse to slack off on, on uh, the language, you know, that comes from a country where you want to, you're, you're, you, where you want your uh, manga to be published in, right? So, yeah. So, I, I, I feel like that should be step one. And um, next up, you gotta have persistence. You can't give up if you really wanna, if you really believe in yourself with your talent um, to becoming a mangaka. Like I get a lot of people who come up to me and be like, yeah, I really wanna become a mangaka. It's the same way that people come up to me and be like, oh, I wanna be a singer, that kind of stuff. But 99% of the time I'm skeptical because I'm gonna lay out the truth right here. Okay, so it is really rare for to have someone who is 100% dedicated to that. So if someone comes up to me and say, I really wanna be a mangaka one day in Japan, then that better be 100% commitment and not gonna be like, yeah, well, you know, if I can be a mangaka, I'll be one, but, um, you know, like as a backup, I'll, I'll like, you know, do this. And if it doesn't work, and maybe, like that maybe iffy shit, it worked for some people, but as a person who chose music over universities that I've been accepted to, like UCLA and UC Berkeley, like I, I you know, I, I chose music instead and went there. So from my perspective, it's such a half-assed thing to say when people come up to me and say, yeah, I, want, I really want to become a singer. I sing every day, but at the same time, I, I do this and that and this and that and... You know, I don't, like, I only do, you know, I sing when I have time kind of stuff. That's, uh, you know, nine out of ten, they're not going to make it or more. 
you know, there's more possibility of not making it. Because, like I said, being having that half-assed kind of passion, like, um, it's going to have its toll. Because the reason why I say is because, um, well, from what I heard, uh, how do you say, for example, this manga anthology, the publishing company is recruiting people, recruiting mangakas. And I think what they do is they put advertisements in one of these, uh, for example, if it's like Shonen Jump or something, I think they sometimes put that advertisement like, oh, you want to become a mangaka? Then submit your work. And if we like you, then we'll, you know, call you up, that kind of thing. I think, okay, I'm not sure, but uh, it's kind of like send your demo tapes for musicians kind of thing. So, um, and the competition is obviously high. So chances are you're not going to get your work uh, chosen at least soon, right? For most people anyway. So you can't give up. You got to keep on trying, trying, trying. How, however many years it's going to take, you got to keep on trying if you really have that uh, confidence to become a mangaka. If that is like your only mm, goal, if, you're on, if your only dream in life is that, like, yeah, I'm going to do that, then you got to have that commitment. It's about commitment. Of course, it's important when to give up too because... Uh, people's gotta gotta make you know you people need to make their make a living and like if you if you got infinite am amount of money then you can keep on submitting your stuff and be like okay maybe another day you can do that forever but I understand that you have to support yourself so um, figuring out when to give up is also an important um, part of trying to become a mangaka and stuff like that. But what I'm trying to say is that you can't uh, get your self-esteem to get you even if you get your work rejected like billions of times. You know what I'm saying? So you can't have that, ah, I suck because my work didn't get chosen. You can't go like that after being rejected only once or twice. You have to keep on going but once again that's only that's only if you really want to become a mangaka and that is the only way and you really believe in yourself and that's oh so yeah um another thing is that um i think you got to be ready to move to japan if you want to be a mangaka in japan i mean it's i think it's possible to just send your uh what is it called your draft or whatever to japan because in this day and age you can do these kind of stuff uh, from overseas but um i would always be ready to move to japan because many times that's um easier for the publishing company for the editors to come up to you and you, you go to a meeting and talk uh, about how to construct story and stuff because there's a lot there's gonna be a lot of meeting with uh, I, I think they're, they're called editors, but It's not just gonna be your thing. It's not gonna be like you're gonna uh, draw your manga. Okay, here it is Okay, so publish this please. It's not gonna be like that uh, How it's gonna be is that you're gonna talk to people and then editors gonna tell you no you should do this in this page on this page because to get more attention of the readers you got to do blah 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 and a lot of people will tell all sorts of things to you and you got to be able to put up with those things and so I feel like it makes more sense to move to Japan if they want you to move to Japan and you got to have that uh, you got to be ready for that you know um, you can't be lazy about that and that, that brings me to the previous point of um, how important it is to speak Japanese, right? So if you're going to move to Japan, then it makes sense to speak, learn, and like read and write Japanese, right? So, yeah, that's from my common sense. That is the obvious that I can state right now. But once again, don't take my word for it for anything that I said in this video because that's just how I think. And I feel like it makes 
total sense if you want to be a mangaka in Japan. And for those people who are saying, oh man, like uh, foreigners can't be a mangaka in Japan. I don't think that's true. Um, I don't know where people get that idea. Maybe there's, I don't know, like I just, I don't know the industry, so maybe it might be harder for foreigners to become mangaka, but I feel like a lot of people are just um, giving excuses for the reasons of, oh, you know, they, they only accept people who can speak Japanese or something, which is no shit Sherlock kind of thing. And um, I just feel like many times people are just too lazy to commit themselves to becoming a true mangaka in Japan and like they give up so fast. It's like, I don't know where to submit my stuff. Ah, they don't want foreigners to become mangaka. Like, I mean, who wants a lazy mofo to become uh, mangaka anyway, right? If you, if, from a publishing company standpoint. I don't, I don't believe so because there are actually uh, foreigners who are, how do you say, who are drawing mangas for a Japanese manga company or publishing company. So there you go. Foreigners can become a manga. Boom. Um, yeah, so I, I say if it were me and if I was a foreigner, then I would just totally, yeah, get the language down, uh, start submitting my works to the publishing company and see it from there and just keep on doing that. Well, but that's just how I think. So, all right, that's the best Japanese lesson in the galaxy. I'm Sensei Joe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Take